Hello, I'm Howard, pastor of the Roseville New Church, and welcome to Spiritual Shorts. After a three-week midwinter break, we are back. Well, sort of. With a resurgent pandemic and an increasing number of community spread infections of COVID-19, the greater Sydney area is under a very strict lockdown. Over the last several weeks, I've done very short spiritual shorts. I'll call them spiritual short shorts. But with our inability to return to in-person services, I will return to my longer 10 to 15 minute episode. You know, lockdowns can be very challenging, particularly if you are alone. As I can myself attest, too much time alone can give some serious space for evil spirits and head bullies to go to work on each of us. A favorite tactic these spirits use to, is to get us to focus on the negative aspects of who we are and the negative things we may not be proud of from our past. Often, inflating these to a far greater importance than is warranted. With that in mind, I wanted to offer a more big picture view of who we are and who we will be in the spiritual world. Let's begin. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have two lessons today. Hear the word of the Lord as it is written in the book of Revelation. And I saw a great white throne and the one sitting on it. The earth and sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne, and the books were opened, including the book of life, and the dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in those books. The sea gave up its dead, and death and the grave gave up their dead, and all were judged according to their deeds. Our second lesson from the work, The Last Judgment from Emanuel Swedenborg. None of us is judged on the basis of our earthly self. Therefore, we are not judged while we are still living in our physical bodies. We are judged on the basis of our spiritual self. So our judgment occurs when we have come into the spiritual world. It is our spiritual nature that is judged, not our earthly nature, which is simply a tool or an instrument through which the spiritual self acts. When we are in our spiritual body, others can actually see what our love and faith are really like. Because in the spiritual world, all of us are an embodiment of what we love. Not only in face and body, but also in speech and actions. That is why, in that world, you can tell what people are really like and why people can be sorted instantly whenever it pleases the Lord. Amen. Here end the lessons 
Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. So who are you? Well, who, who am I? And who are you to me? Who am I to you? The Irish writer Oscar Wilde wrote only one novel in his career, The Picture of Dorian Gray. The work, an archetypal tale of a young man who purchases eternal youth at the expense of his soul. It features a painting of its main character in all his youthful beauty and vibrance. Not to spoil the plot, but Dorian's bargain was that he would forever remain the youthful appearance captured in the painting, while the painting would age. Susceptible to being drawn into all manner of evil and sin, Dorian began to notice that age wasn't the only thing the painting was showing. Dorian's deception, immorality, and debauchery were now appearing as horrible disfigurations of the man in the picture. Dorian comes to understand that more than a simple portrait, the picture of Dorian Gray was a representation of his soul. Rocked by this revelation, Dorian attempts to wrestle with his inner demons, desiring to change his ways. After some time, Dorian feels he has made some apparent successes in changing his ways and visits once again the painting to see if there are any improvements in the appearance of his soul. Gazing at the picture, Dorian is horrified to learn that far from improving the picture, the picture has now acquired a look of cunning. He decides to destroy the painting, tears through it with a knife. His servants hear a scream, and when they enter the room, they find a loathsome old man dead on the floor with a knife in his chest, and a portrait of the beautiful young man he once was. A great story. One actually that has kind of horrified me since I saw it as a child. But, you know, after we pass into the spiritual world and, and before we go to heaven, we will learn from the teachings of the new church that, that there's a process we go through. This process has three stages. You know, first, we come to know the essence of who we are, what we truly love, and what drives us. Is it the Lord we love above all else? Is it the neighbor we love above all else? Or is it the world that we love above all else? Or is it the self? Is it ourselves that we love above all else? The second stage, in the second stage, other spirits come to know who we are. They come to see clearly, like in our lesson today, who we are. Now, the third stage, if we are going to heaven, is a place of instruction. But if we're not going to heaven, if it is evident from all around who see us and to ourselves that we are not going to heaven, we don't go to the third stage. We simply go to that other place. 
Now, think about those stages. And specifically, consider the interplay of stages one and two. Getting to know yourself and others getting to know you. And listen again to these words from Revelation. And books were opened, including the book of life, and the dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. You know, I, I imagine that these books are filled with portraits, self-portraits, two self-portraits for each of us. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. In essence, these portraits, I imagine, are self-portraits to be revealed when we enter the world of spirits. The first portrait of who we think we are, and the second, who we are really at a soul level. And, and the choices, the things we have done, the choices we make, the things we have done, are the brush strokes in this portrait. And all were judged according to their deeds. Now, on its surface, this passage seems to contradict what I understand to be true of how we are judged in the next life. In the next life, we are judged based on what we have come to love, not what we have done. Now, think of that in the context of a painting. You know, I can, I can make a lot of mistakes in the brush strokes I use in a painting. In fact, on an individual basis, no brush stroke is a painting or is itself perfect. But when combined with hundreds or thousands of other brush strokes, it will increase in beauty and in context. A bit like my decisions. If I do bad things, but, but I, I repent for them, or I work to get better, I will get better. And I will come to love being this better, more godly self. Each person was judged according to what he had done. So with what brush strokes are you painting with today? And the question for each of us to ponder is, are we painting the picture we think we are painting? Or are we painting our own personalized picture of Dorian Gray. Amen. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Spiritual Shorts. And may God bless you.